So, um, and the recording is there. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, um, uh, thank you so much, Marissa. So, firstly, um, we are uh, we're going to move through in a moment, and I will hand back uh, to my colleague, to Veronique Dupont, um, to introduce us uh, to the strategy redesign, the first section. Um, then we will hear uh, from our colleague from within the strategy team, from Fumi Ololorum, uh, in terms of the strategy design principles uh, and the reflection activity that we'll uh, that pursue. Um, looking forward then to hearing from, from Kate Rademacher, the, uh, the lead uh, of the strategy team in this next section, um, the summary of the preliminary findings from that very important contextual analysis that builds on the 2019 RHSE ecosystem analysis, of course. We'll move through then into a, um, a further reflection activity and an overview of the forward-looking review um, with, uh, uh, with uh, our colleague Don Laura from the team. Uh, we'll move into uh, discussion and Q&A section. Uh, we'll come back to Kate, we'll chair that. We'll be constantly monitoring the chat, by the way, for any questions as we go along. And then we're very, very grateful indeed um, to have our excellent executive committee member, uh, the wonderful Pam Steele, um, who will take us through the closing and remind us on the importance uh, of engaging as members in this crucial uh, strategy process. So when I see all of the introductions coming in to the chat, please do keep those coming. Uh, and as you do keep them coming, I'm now going to hand over to Veronique to uh, to take us into the uh, to the introduction to this. Welcome everyone once again. Thank you, Martin. Next slide, please. So wh why why are we do doing this 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 redesign now? Well, our our strategy, uh, the 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 current one, we launched in 2015, and the strategy will end in a few years in 2025. So the time is right for us for the RHSC to uh, to pause and reflect and to start planning for the future. Uh, as we embark on this process, we are committed to, uh, to ensuring that we capture the broad diversity of voices that exist within the coalition. As Martin Smith mentioned, we really see this exercise as a par participatory and, in and inclusive one. When we talk about the redesign, we talk about three, three deliverables. We talk about the contextual analysis to better understand uh, the changes in the ecosystem, in particular uh, since 2019, which was the date of our last ecosystem an an analysis. We also include within this uh, a forward-looking re review so that we can inform our future work. And we, inf and we include a refresh of our strategy so that our, 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 our strategy reflects the, the RHSC where, where, where it is now uh, within this evolving la landscape. Um, I, in about uh, a few weeks ago, uh, earlier this month, we launched a new website, uh, and this is a page on, on our website, which you can see here. The purpose of that website is to keep you, our members, abreast of this process, and most importantly, uh, to, to let you know ways in which that you can engage in the redesign. Uh, I will highlight a couple of things on this timeline. So uh, in May, of 2020, of May in 2023, we launched a contextual analysis. Uh, in September, we launch this website and we also launch a membership wide sur survey. You can access this survey. Uh, there's a link on our website and um, we will also put it in the chat. So if you haven't answered uh, to this uh, short survey, please do so. We want to hear from you and please feel free to forward the survey to your colleagues who work in this space. Uh, in a few weeks from now, we hope to see many of you uh, in Accra, Ghana. We've planned some exciting sessions uh, at the GMM that will, uh, that will really engage our members in a visioning exercise during, during plenary. Uh, during the working groups, uh, during their meetings Monday through Wednesday, there will be also some discussion around the redesign of our, stra of our, stra of our strategy. So you'll have an opportunity to engage there. Um, and of course, uh, as you continue to engage in our working group over the next few months, uh, you will also get uh, some update on this process. Uh, the redesign will culminate in the launch of our strategy, a new one in March of 2024. Um, so uh, this work will end really uh, by the end of March so that we can 
do more work starting in April. Next slide, please. So to help us with this, um, the, with this process, we've put in place an advisory group, and these are the members um, on this slide. Uh, this is a key body that is helping us both to challenge and to validate the findings from the three exercises, from, from the contextual analysis, from the forward-looking review, and the refresh for a strategy. Uh, this group, uh, these members, uh, were drawn from across the structures of the RHSC, so from our working groups, from our regional forums, from our caucuses, from our work stream, from the executive as well. Uh, they're, they're individuals that both work at the global and the country le levels, uh, and people who work really all along the, the, the supply chain. So we have some donors, we have procurers, suppliers, uh, members of governments, and civil so so society in this group. Uh, we're very, very grateful for their time and for, for, and for their expertise. The advisory group has met a couple times already. Uh, you will see many of these individuals uh, in Accra. They will be wearing an ambassador's badge. So if you have uh, any input you want to provide, I encourage you to reach out and to engage with those individuals. Next slide. And finally, I wanted to introduce you to the consultant team that we've recruited to help us with this work. Uh, this is a robust team with a breadth and depth of knowledge in reproductive health. Uh, what's also interesting about this team uh, is some of them have been engaged with ARHSD in the past and others not. Um, I, we have Dr. Don Loro on the top left. Uh, Don was previously with the uh, Packard Fa Fa Foundation. He was a co-author on the 2012 evaluation of the RHSC and also helped us with our strategy back in 2015. Um, Dr. Fulmi Olorum is completely new to the RHSC. She had never engaged with us in the past. Uh, she's with PMA in Nigeria. She's, um, she's a, a doctor, a professor, and a researcher who's published quite a bit on women's RH issues. Uh, a master fa 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 facilitator, Jillian uh, Mayers, also is uh, part of this team. She's planned some exciting se sessions for us during the GMM. She also helped us design uh, some key discussion with the constituencies that are engaged in this work. Uh, and last but not least, Kate uh, is the team lead. Uh, she has a history of engagement within the working groups of the RHSC over the years. Um, she has more than 25 years of experience in reproductive health, and, uh, and she was previously with FHI 360. And with that, I will hand it over uh, to Funmi, who will talk about some of the principles that are guiding this work. Hi, thank you so much, Veronique. The strategy redesign has three main guiding principles. First, it's a highly participatory process. All voices matter, and we're reaching out to a broad range of individuals from the diverse RHSC membership in order to obtain diverse perspectives. Second, the process is deliberate, and we're embarking on purposeful country engagement. We're applying the principles of country ownership and diversity, equity, and inclusion at each step. Third, the process is balanced, including both a refresh as well as opportunities for innovation. Next, please. In a few minutes, we will be telling you more about what we're learning from the contextual analysis but before then, we'd like you to participate in a reflection exercise. So our first question for you is, what do you think are the biggest challenges that may impact reproductive health supplies in the coming decade? We'd like you to use the chat box to provide your response. And I will read out a few of these. What do you think are the biggest challenges that may impact reproductive health supplies in the coming decade? I'll pause for a moment and then highlight some of the responses.
Thank you for your responses. Please keep them coming. I'm seeing many of the things we have been hearing from those we have interviewed. So financing for commodities is a big challenge. Tariffs and import fees. Lots of stuff here on funding and financing. Global geopolitics and a reduction in human rights, particularly rights of women and girls. Shifting priorities to other health topics and products. Please keep them coming. Global geopolitics. Please continue to put your responses in the chat as we move on through the webinar. I'll hand it over to Kate now. Thank you so much, Finmi, and thanks everyone for those ideas. As Finmi mentioned, we're hearing a lot of the same themes emerge in the contextual analysis, and I'm gonna give an overview of that. Next slide, please. So as Veronique mentioned, um, we began this work with the strategy redesign with a rapid contextual analysis, which took place starting at the end of May and moved us into uh, the end of August. Many of you on the call provided inputs into this contextual analysis, and we're really grateful for that support. Next slide. So just briefly, the objectives of this uh, rapid assessment were to surface and assess significant changes, disruptions, and advances with a focus on changes in the past four to five years. We all know that the last several years have uh, included a lot of big changes. And um, as Martin mentioned in his opening remarks, there was a 2019 uh, ecosystem report that was led by Meg Braddock and John Skibiak, which really is what the body of work that we're building on. So what we wanted to know is what are the major changes that are happening in our reproductive health ecosystem and how is that going to inform the strategy of the coalition for the coming decade? We spoke to over 40 key informants as part of this work and synthesized those perspectives. Again, many thanks to those of you who have participated in one of those interviews. We reviewed relevant documents and attended a number of webinars hosted by RHSC and other meetings. In addition, for those of you who are familiar with the LEAP report that RHSC hosts that's led by Avenir and other partners, um, that's going through a refresh concurrently with the strategy redesign. So we'll be incorporating some of the quantitative data that's coming out of LEAP as we continue to move forward with this work. In addition, again, we want to provide sort of a snapshot of where we are, understanding that the ecosystem continues to change every single day and that we need to remain responsive and nimble as a community and so that the strategy need, needs to reflect that as well. Next slide, please. So let's briefly go over some of the fi key findings from the contextual analysis, as well as some of our preliminary recommendations, and then I'll hand it to my colleagues, Don and Funmi, to talk more about the next steps. So just briefly, you can see here, um, we looked at three primary uh, kind of buckets of area, you know, areas where there have been changes, and we had initial hypotheses, which were then refined and further developed from key informant interviews. So on the macro level, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic has dominated our thinking and our awareness for the last several years. Um, globally, of course, COVID-19 has disproportionately impacted people living in LMICs, and worldwide, over 7 million people have died as a result of the pandemic. Um, we heard from many people and, and documented ourselves that RHSC has truly been a global leader in generating and curating information about the impact of the pandemic on RH markets. And it was also clear to us that while the impact of the pandemic really um, wasn't actually as severe as people feared, the COVID-19 also Im revealed important vulnerabilities in the RH supply chain and our focus moving forward needs to be on future pandemic preparedness as well as responding to other crises, um, including the growing crisis of, set by humanitarian settings um, and that we need to make sure that we're meeting the reproductive health needs of refugees and other displaced people as well as those affected by climate change. Just moving down the list, as some people mentioned in the chat, there's been a rise of opposition to sexual and reproductive health in some settings, although there have been notable successes in other countries. Globally, we've really uh, been shifting increased attention and emphasis on locally led development and country ownership over the past several years. And we heard that from a number of groups and that, that it's important that RHSC um, remains and grows in its leadership role in that area. There's also been a um, increased prioritization of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And as Funmi said a moment ago, that's reflected in our principles for the redesign. 
We're also there's seeing more investments in gender equity, um, as well, of course, as major demographic trends that are going to influence reproductive health supplies in the coming years, including the growing youth population, migration, um, et cetera. We also know that the digital landscape is just changing every single day and that the rise of artificial intelligence in particular is going to impact um, our reproductive health supplies uh, ecosystem. And we heard that from a number of stakeholders. Finally, in, w, uh, in 2019, the World Health Organization classified burnout as an occupational phenomenon for the first time. And of course, that was before the pandemic, when event, uh, many of us were working harder and longer hours than we've really ever worked before. So we also heard from a number of stakeholders that there's a risk that some of our best people in the RH ecosystem may be at risk of burnout or already experiencing burnout. So we have to take care of ourselves and one another. As part of that, WHO has also told us that we are living in a infodemic where we're all sort of inundated and overwhelmed by the volume of information available. And so part of our role moving forward is to curate effectively that information, which of course RHSC uh, focuses us on now. Next slide, please. To what we called partners, programs, and products. And this included um, changes in the donor landscape as well as changes in financing for RH supplies. There have also been a launch of new partnerships. Um, of course, the transition from FP2020 to FP2030 was one of the most notable ones. There have also been the launch of SEMA, um, other pro project changes, major project changes. Um, so we're really are living in a in a rapidly evolving ecosystem. And a lot of the donors that have been core funders of RHSC are experiencing their own internal changes. And so, um, as I mentioned a moment ago, the coalition needs to remain responsive and nimble as the landscape um, continues to evolve day by day. We also spoke to a number of stakeholders about commodity specific changes um, in the four areas that RHSC currently focuses on, contraception, maternal health, safe abortion supplies, and menstrual health. There are a number of cross product uh, considerations that we can really uh, learn from one another, even though the needs of, within those four areas are unique, there are unique sensitivities, needs, resource constraints, um, but also there are shared lessons and commonalities. And so the coalition provides an important opportunity to come together and learn from one another, uh, both now and in the future. And particularly, we heard from a number of people that one of the main value propositions of the coalition is the diversity of stakeholders that it brings and the trust, the neutrality, and the convening power that the coalition um, is known for is really one of its greatest strengths. And that includes engaging engaging manufacturers. Many, many people appreciate that manufacturers feel welcome and um, have a meaningful contribution within the coalition. And so we need to make sure that we understand the needs and perspectives of manufacturers moving forward. And finally, we also know that there's a number of emerging um, and priority technical areas, including self-care and integration, which have been around for many, many years, but are getting increasing focus. And again, the coalition uh, we heard is well positioned to continue to be a thought leader in these areas and really, again, and leverage the brain trust that uh, that we have within our HSC. Next slide. We also looked at changes within the coalition. Of course, most one of those notable changes is that we welcomed Martin Smith um, as the new director, and um, there have also been other new sta new staff. Um, uh, we recently saw a newsletter that a new colleague based in Zambia, Nintendo, who I had the pleasure of meeting last week in DC, just joined as the uh, director of implementing, um, excuse me, implementing mechanisms as an initiative. So we look forward to seeing uh, what's going to happen as Nintendo joins the, the coalition and will be, I know, um, at in Accra next month. There's also, um, you know, we've heard that, of course, engagement in some of the implementing mechanisms um, struggled in some ways during the pandemic, that it was harder to connect online and that we need to really come back together, celebrate our resilience, and also figure out ways that we can connect and stay connected in, in this new era of hybrid living where we all um, maybe don't meet as much as often in person, but also are connecting in new and innovative ways online. We're also aware that there are many regional considerations and that there are strong, um, there's strong work within the coalition, notably within Forlac, um, where we can build off some of the strengths, but also paying more attention to what some of those regional needs are and dynamics in the coming years. Next slide, please. 
I can see some of the quotations from key informants. These are just a few, um, but one of them are, we are at a key inflection point. I think that's um, that was a message that came through all of our work, that this is really a time of tremendous change and that the coalition is, it really has, uh, that the reproductive self-supplies ecosystem has demonstrated incredible resilience, but that we need to build on that and moving forward. Another quotation, the pandemic demonstrated how truly can interconnect we are. And then finally, seismic shifts in the social, political and economic environment laid bare the fragility of the social contract. How are we as a global community going to heal and get back to what matters? Next slide. So here are just some of the sample um, preliminary recommendations that came out of the contextual analysis that we are going to be building on in the next phase of work, which again, Don and Funmu will be talking about in just a moment. I'll just go through a few of these. We have more of them coming out, but in the interest of time, we'll just give you a sneak peek of a few of them. First of all, um, as I mentioned, the um, we heard and saw the data that while the impact of the pandemic was not as severe as anticipated, COVID-19 revealed important vulnerabilities in our supply chains. So moving forward, we have to focus on preparedness. And that, again, of course, may be a future pandemic, but also are potentially crises related to humanitarian needs as well as climate change. Secondly, uh, we heard from many and we know from past evaluations, including those that Don was involved in, that country engagement has been an ongoing challenge throughout RHSC's history. And so we need to identify additional strategies to amplify the voices of regional and country level stakeholders and grow their leadership within the coalition. The internal, both internal within the RHSC as well as external regional forum may offer us a roadmap of how to do that. So we'll be looking at that more in the next phase. The next one, data analytics. RHSC is well known for its work with data analytics that include, of course, includes work with the VAN as well as other resources such as LEAP and Compass. And in the future, RHSC should consider playing a greater role with data leadership, including data visibility, tracking, et cetera. Next, strategic planning. The four pillars, strategic pillars, which we know currently as the pillars, um, availability, quality, equity, and choice remain highly relevant. Um, in our first advisory group meeting, which we had in August, um, as Veronique mentioned, we had a wonderful advisory group. We, we did a deep dive around these four pillars. And um, they're clearly all extremely important and highly valued. Um, however, there was feedback that we may need a new visual representation to represent and reflect their interconnectivity. We may also want to consider adding additional strategic objectives and perhaps moving away from the word pillar, as that was seen by some as a static and somewhat siloed image. So we'll be moving that conversation forward to the general membership meeting in Accra next month and encourage you all to attend if you're able. And then we'll be following up with the advisory group after the GMM to do additional work in this area. In addition, an uh, uh, insight that has emerged from the work so far is that the current structure of the implementing mechanisms may not be well suited to move our, to meet the needs of RHSC moving forward. The implementing mechanism, which of course include the caucuses, the work stream, the working groups, um, the regional forum, feel a little bit, the analogy we've been using is that there we built a house and that we've been adding additions to the house um, as the years have gone by, but that we may need to step back and say, is the current structure of the house serving us well? And um, people seemed enthusiastic about the possibility of blank, blank slate thinking. So if you're involved with a working group or a caucus or a work stream, and you have ideas of what may work better in the future or what needs to be retained, please reach out to your chair or co-chair. Please reach out to members of the strategy team. If you're going to be in Ghana, please um, participate and bring those thoughts to your sessions. So we're really excited to work with Nintendo and others um, on that moving forward. And then finally, um, we all know that, as I mentioned, the current scope of the coalition focuses on contraception, um, but also maternal health, safe abortion, and menstrual health. And we, we heard from a number of informants that we need to make sure that those other three areas receive adequate representation within RHSC. And there may be a potential to expand focus to other RH supplies areas in the coming years, although that is going to take careful consideration, um, given that the keys, one of the key strengths of RHSC is the strong trust and relationships that are forged within, within um, the meetings and the the convenings we have, so we want to make sure that we don't, uh, you know, jeopardize that in any way. Next slide. So now I'm going to hand it over back to Funmi and Don to talk about the next steps, uh, or one of the next steps, which includes a forward-looking review. Funmi. Thank you, Kate. Next slide, please. 
So we're going to have another reflection exercise. You did such a great job the first time. We're gonna ask you to answer another question. What do you think are the biggest opportunities in the RH supplies ecosystem? So you've told us about what you think the greatest challenges are. Now let's look at opportunities. Again, we'll give you a minute or so to put your responses in the chat box and then I'll call out a few of them. What do you think are the biggest opportunities in the reproductive health supplies ecosystem? Thank you for your responses. Please keep them coming. Training and development, excellent. Collaboration amongst members, working with manufacturers to ensure affordability and quality. Decentralizing production, eliminating taboos. What a wide range. Diversification of financing for greater long-term resilience, technological advancements, global collaboration, community-based programs, new and affordable products available on the market, learning across product types. We're all very ho hopeful. Please keep them coming. What do you think are the biggest opportunities in the RH supplies ecosystem? Strength in all regions excellent responses. Even as we move on, please keep them coming. Next slide, please. And I'll hand it over to Don. Uh, we're glad to present this, uh, this part of the uh, strategy development. So it's important to note that we are doing a forward-looking review. So that differs from an evaluation. An evaluation, like I did back in 2012 of the RHSC, looks back and what they did uh, as a basis for thinking about what can be more, what can be done to move forward. But the forward-looking review starts with the premise that we want to look at the future. We want to, in all the data that we collect, look towards what are the future possibilities, what are the opportunities, what are the challenges, uh, and see how that can work. So to do this, um, the process that we're using. We first do an extensive document review, and we look into those documents to see what they can portend about the future. And we gather all that information. We're way over 100 documents that we've looked at uh, at this stage. Then the next part, which many of you hopefully have participated in, is a member survey. So we reach out to the members themselves and ask them, okay, what, what do you think about the future? And we ask that in several different ways in that survey, and we hope and encourage you to respond to that survey if you haven't done so already. And then the last part, which we're currently involved in, is uh, interviewing key informants. Uh, key informants we interviewed previously for the contextual analysis, many of them did talk about the future. We encourage that. And we captured that information. And now we're going through another round of key informants where we're focusing again on what are the, we're going in depth and really probing to see what the future can look like for the RHSC and, and really what is the future for the supplies landscape in general. Um, the next part is the product. So what do we do with all this information? So we, we gather it, we have databases, we call those databases and in real time, as we learn, we're feeding that information and we'll feed that information to the members. And we do that uh, first to the advisory group, which has already been mentioned, and then also to the executive committee. And also you'll see some of that evidence emerge in the GMM. Uh, also on the, the uh, members survey, you have an opportunity to put in there if you would be willing to interview uh, by us as a key informant. We can't promise to reach everybody. We have a limited bandwidth on doing this, but I encourage you to think about 
coming forth as key informants. So what's the purpose then? Um, it's to give you as a coalition some thoughtful and thought through ideas of what the future could be. We're not prescriptive. We're providing a range of ideas from the membership because this is a membership organization. You will be driving the future. You will be creating the future. Uh, and that's what we're gonna provide. We're gonna feed that through the system in real time as the strategy is being developed. Uh, next slide, please. So this, this is our process. We, we do look back a little bit uh, and we look at performance and what happened in the past. We look uh, also at the ecosystem, what's going on, uh, what's the comparative uh, advantage and value that the RHSC can add. We look uh, to the internal structures in particular, the IMs as they're now called. We look a little bit at the past, the present and continue to ask about the future. And then we also really probe for future directions, responding to challenges, the same two questions you've been answering in the chat, responding to challenges, identifying opportunities. And we roll all that up into top recommendations for the RHSC strategy. We're not prescriptive in this. We're providing lots of different ideas and it will be up to you, the members, to really form that strategy. Next slide. Fumi, do you wanna come back in? Sure, Don. Thank you very much. So for the forward-looking review, we are seeking answers to four main questions, each with a set of sub-questions. We're interested in the achievements of the coalition. We want to know how well RHSC has made an impact in the reproductive health supply space since 2015 and what the implications are for future work. Secondly, what is the coalition's comparative advantage and value for money in the reproductive health supplies ecosystem? Third, we're interested in the coalition's internal structures. To what extent are these appropriate and effective in supporting its strategic and work plan objectives? And how should these structures evolve? And fourth, regarding future directions, how can RHSC continue to add value? Next slide, please. I'll hand it over back to Kate. Great, thank you so much. Um, so that provides you with an overview. And now we have um, about 10 or 15 minutes actually for Q&A and we're actually doing well on time. So I'd like to give people the opportunity um, to come off mute if you want. Um, you can also post your comments or questions in the chat. If you have questions um, and you wanna come off mute or comments, please raise your hand. You can use in the reactions box, the raise hand functionality, or again, um, you can put your questions into the chat. Any questions or comments um, that people want to share? This is a quiet group so far. I think the uh, the activities are showing there's a little bit of a sort of pregnant pause while people are gathering their thoughts, and then a lot a lot can come thereafter. So maybe we just need a little. Thirty seconds. And what gap. we can also do, um, and and. Um, Veronique, I may ask you to speak to this, is just talk a little bit more about how people during the general membership meeting, for those who are planning to attend, um, how, how and when they can engage. But let's, as Martin said, just give people another minute to think about whether they have any questions or comments. Um, and then maybe, Veronique, I'll hand it to you to just talk about the general membership meeting. I know many of the people on the line, Kate, have, have in, engaged in um, in their own organisational strategy processes. Uh, would be also keen to hear uh, reflections uh, on the process we're following as well. Uh,
So Jimmy's asking in the chat, are there any metrics tracking trending the data discussed today? And Jimmy, maybe you can just clarify, are you regard, um, is there a specific, um, are you asking about RHSC's performance? That's the area. Um, Jimmy, are you there? Are you able to come off mute? Just to clarify your question. Yes. And OK. So one thing I will mention is, um, you know, that that uh, maybe I can take the question about tracking um, and, and Jimmy, I'm not sure if I totally understand your question, but if it's about sort of monitoring and evaluation progress of the coalition, that's one of the key outputs of the strategy redesign. In addition to um, the, the forward looking review, which Don and Funmi met, just mentioned, I'll be working closely with Jillian, who was not able to join today, Veronique and the Secretariat to actually come up with the output of a, of a refreshed or redesigned strategy. Um, you can visit the, see the current RHSC strategy on the website. We can share the link in the chat in just a moment. And as part of that, we'll be developing a new monitoring and evaluation framework. And one of the areas that we're considering and that we're having further discussion about is whether um, in using a more uh, complexity awareness based model for M M monitoring, learning and evaluation. So we're looking at actually outcome mapping and outcome harvesting as a pro as a potential approach or rather outcome mapping and outcome harvesting as a part of that. So for those of you who are familiar with that, um, that form of m and &E, again, that's an area that we're looking at right now and we'll be talking about more during the GMM and afterwards. So please reach out to Veronique or myself if you have thoughts about that. Uh, Maria asks about financial support um, to continue with the most critical challenges. And I might let Martin speak to um, yep. the financing of this work and the changing sort of donor landscape. Martin, can I hand that to you? Yeah, sure. So um, it's an excellent question, Maria Luisa. Thanks so much. So um, I think what's very clear, um, you know, the, the, the core funding um, that really lies at the heart of RHSC's ability to convene uh, to run our working groups, our caucuses, our work streams. Um, you know, we, we're giving ourselves a long runway um, from the completion of the strategy in March of 2024, as Veronique was setting out, through till um, March of 2025, when the, uh, the current work plan uh, and core funding cycle comes to a conclusion to put that financing in place, you know, like every other RH supplies focused organization in the world, we're going to make sure that that core funding in place is, is diversified uh, and therefore robust uh, and the need to be resilient, of course. But then more specifically to your question, Maria Luisa, so I think the Innovations Fund, which has been uh, very much a sort of central part of, of RHSC's ability to, to have discrete financing available for um, specific work that our, uh, that our members, coalitions of members, members themselves want to pursue. I think there is a very, very strong likelihood that the Innovation Fund will continue into the next strategy. And that obviously then gives us the ability um, to make, uh, again, discrete financial support grants um, that are in uh, sort of agreed direction of, of, of high priority areas within our supplies landscape. So I think you can rest assured that that will be a central part of our HSV in our next strategy period. Thanks. Back to you, Kate. So much, Martin. Um, we've got a question from Martha Brady about how our HSG strategy can align with the broader localization agenda. And I, I can provide a few thoughts on that, but if um, other members of the strategy team want to add in, please, please jump in. I think this is a critical question, Martha. Thank you for this. And, um, you know, we're at, as I mentioned earlier, a, a major sort of inflection point within the de development community more broadly as we try to focus more of our resources and um, understanding about the need to amplify country ownership, country leadership and of course locally led development as part of that. So I think that there's several ways that this is going to manifest in the strategy redesign. One is, as I mentioned already, how can we amplify and support um, country voices within RHSC? And are the current uh, implementing mechanisms well designed to encourage and facilitate country ownership and leadership? And that's a key question we'll be looking at 
um, both in the forward-looking review that Don and Funmi are leading, but in the conversations that will be facilitating with the advisory group, et cetera. I think there's also sort of technical manifestations of this. For example, the quality assurance discussion that we're having in a number of different um, ways is, you know, how do we balance, uh, you know, there's the question of, um, international quality standards, and then understanding that many countries have their own processes for evaluating quality and registering products. So that's kind of one area that we're looking at. We're also hearing a lot about the desire for more regionally manufactured RH commodities, particularly following the pandemic, that one of the vulnerabilities I mentioned is that many products are manufactured, particularly the need for regional manufacturing in Sub-Saharan Africa. And we know that that's a longer um, sort of in broader vision that's going to take substantial investments. And so we're hearing that the coalition is also well positioned to facilitate some of those conversations around regional manufacturing. But there's a lot of manifestations of this. So um, Martin, Veronique, Don, if we need, do any of you want to add in on that? There's two very swift points, Kate. Uh, thanks so much. And thanks for the question, Martha. So Further to the point on regional manufacturing uh, that Kate was making, um, this is very much um, uh, featuring within the GMN coming up in Accra, featuring in parallel sessions, uh, and is the subject of a main plenary session on the 20th, Friday 20th of October. That's just the beginning of this, I think, as far as RHSC is concerned. But again, I think it's a pretty safe bet that this is set to be a big issue that RHSC is going to uh, lead within uh, and create a convening platform for our members to really get involved and engaged. And just a second quick thing I'd also add uh, to, to Kate's points. Uh, so RHSC published a diversity, equity and inclusion statement on the 30th of June of this year. Again, that's just the start. Uh, we do, will have a set of metrics. Uh, we will have a set of ways in which we're measuring our impact. We're very happy to score well in the recent GH5050 evaluation of RHSD from a, from a gender equity lens, but we're really making sure that we have an intentional uh, program of action around diversity, equity and inclusion that obviously also includes the, the, uh, the, the, the crucial importance of country leadership. So stand by for more on that, that is very much happening in sort of lockstep with, uh, with this strategy process. Back to you, Kate. And Kate, let me let me add in as well. In the forward-looking review, we're certainly reaching out uh, to the countries, and a lot of the key informants are from countries. I can't say that we're reaching out to the furthest levels. Uh, there's a lot of small organizations out there which we are not in contact with. We're hoping that the member survey that some of them will will respond to the member survey, and we'll get some information from them that way. And perhaps also we'll be able to contact them as key informants going forward after that. But it's certainly a topic that we uh, are bringing up uh, with our key informants. All right, thank you. And I see a clarification from Jimmy. Um, let me just read it because I think it's um, helpful. In a re Jimmy writes, in a redesign, you typically establish targets and goals to measure performance over the short long term. I'm looking to see how you're measuring impact. And Jimmy, I really want to thank you for this comment because this is one of the sort of healthy, I'm, I'm starting to think of this as like sort of a healthy tension within the coalition about this desire for impact as well as um, a wide recognition that uh, RHSC is what we call currently the levers of change, the convening power, the brain trust, which are more process oriented, are highly valued and recognized by multiple stakeholder groups. So this is going to be something that we are needing to address head on because many of our of the donors for the coalition in particular are wanting us to articulate um, both the an impact that's anticipated and then measuring how we're doing uh, as a coalition uh, against those targets. So as I mentioned, um, we're having some exciting discussions about outcome mapping as a potential m and &E framework. And um, that is a uh, complexity aware model of m and &E, and um, really takes a prospective look at what of the, the impacts that we're looking for. And we involve some you know, community involvement in terms of um, developing those targets. So we're not gonna get into that at length today because we're still in the early discussions and we will be bringing that to the executive committee next week for further discussion and then some preliminary exploration in the GMM, but stay tuned for more of that. And I'm really glad you're asking about that. Um, let's just see if, uh, there's, I'm not seeing a lot of other questions in the chat. So actually, Veronique, can I circle back to you and can you just give us um, a little bit more of um, 
Uh, anything else you want to say about the general membership meeting? And then maybe we can hand, hand it over to, um, to Pamela to provide some remarks as well. Yeah, thank you, Kate. Um, yes, yeah, so we hope to see many of you at the GMM in a couple of weeks. Um, we have some sessions that are planned. They're very exciting. Uh, they'll be throughout the week from Monday through Friday. Monday, there'll be a council of chairs. So uh, we'll engage uh, for the second time the chairs of the working group uh, to uh, to think about more of the, the structures. So when you talk about the structures, we're thinking about the working group. Um, the caucuses, the regional forums, the work streams, and to make sure that these, to, to better hear how these structures need, need to evolve in the future to deliver on the agenda of the RHSC. So I'll we'll have some discussion ar around this. The some of these discussions the council chair will feed as well into discussion within the working groups on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesdays around those same questions about thinking more about the internal structures of the RHSC. And then on uh, during the plenary on Thursday in the afternoon, there's a wonderful session that Jillian has helped us to plan that will really engage our members in an exercise uh, to envision the future of the RHSC. So she'll take us through a whole process and we'll look at the, some of the high points of the RHSC and, and, and the opportunities that you envision are, are, are emerging and taking some actions to make that vision a reality. Uh, so these are ways in which uh, we'll engage members and our constituents in this work. Uh, there will be some discussion as well. Uh, we're engaging the, the structures of the van as well uh, within this. Um, so this, uh, the van is integral to, to the work of the, of the, of the RHSC. Um, and I will stop there. Thanks so much, Frannick. All right, great. Well, I, um, I'm not seeing any additional questions. If anybody has hey, any final ahead. questions, please. Oh, go ahead, Martin. I saw a couple, I thought, from maybe from Amelia on, on continuous manufacturing. Um, yes, please. And then I thought maybe I saw a point from Maria Luisa on, um, uh, uh, perhaps wasn't answered, our negotiations working with supply providers to reduce price and conception. Do we have time to answer those or are we? Please, are we... please go for it, Martin. Thank you for catching this. Go, go so for I, it. I mean, so, I mean, I'd, I'd love to disappear one minute from you on, on this Amelia. So, you know, continuous manufacturing in, in contrast, uh, as I understand it, to to uh, batch manufacturing. And I mean, I think, and if I'm getting that correctly, I think in, in, in simple terms, we're, we're, we're not we're not there yet in terms of that conversation in, in the um, in, in sort of manufacturing uh, overall. Um, Amelia, do you want to say any more about that very quickly? Uh, just to say it's something that I only recently became aware of in listening to a couple sort of webinars and it seems to be the kind of forefront with within sort of pharma and just thinking about and, and thinking about how that translates to, to sort of more distributed manufacturing and, and more robust and diverse mm -hmm. manufacturing that can respond in real time to, um, you know, to, to changes in needs and supplies. Um, and then also it seems like there's a decent amount of uh, effort being put into sort of the quality um, management and sort of continuous scanning um, as well. So just to, just mm -hmm. Martha's to point was she in. raised in the chat. Yeah. So thanks, Amelia. It's really great. And so, you know, I think within within the, the, pl the plenary session, the GMM, as I say, is, is, is part of this conversation. Um, our colleagues at GHSC PSM will provide some some modeling data where they've looked at, at discrete facilities for hormonal contraceptive uh, manufacturing in sub-Saharan Africa versus shared facilities. And obviously the, the sort of continuous manufacturing piece will, will, will try and have them sort of build in part of that conversation. That's a very good uh, very good point, Amelia. And, and Kate, I, I know we're, we're almost probably at time, but I just wanted to, to see on, I thought there was a comment from Maria Luisa here um, our negotiations working with supply providers to reduce prices on contraception. So, you know, obviously, this is a big feature of um, of our uh, um, of our sort of supply ecosystem in the in the period between maybe 2012 and, and, and 2020, when we think about the implant access program and, and, and DMPASC and so forth, and, and, and price and volume guarantees. I think it remains to be seen. Um, you know how much um, work we um, we desire to put as a community uh, on on these in the next decade. But certainly, I think the you know at this stage with the with our strategy process being as it is, uh, forward-looking review followed by 
strategy redesign. Uh, our team are all ears on what you all think um, is, is necessary for that range of high quality, affordable uh, RH products. So uh, I, would, I wouldn't say these things are off the table, but they always require um, a community effort, not just RHSD acting, um, acting upon, uh, upon our own, of course, as a, as a secretariat. So back to you, Kate. I think we've got five minutes left. Great. Thanks so much, Martin, and really appreciate this conversation. And we're really looking forward to continuing it as I as we've been mentioning at the general membership meeting next month. I just reinserted the chat for those of you who um, may want to register if you haven't already. Um, now we're going to hand, um, maybe we can move to the next slide. I'm just going to hand it over to our colleague, Pamela Steele. We're really blessed to have uh, Pamela here. She's a member of, sorry, we can move to the next slide. We, uh, uh, Pamela is a member of the executive committee as well as on the advisory group for the strategy redesign. Um, so Pamela, and she's the uh, owner and founder of Pamela Steele Associates in Kenya, has been a real champion and voice for the vision. So Pamela, can I um, ask you to just close us out and perhaps give some final reminders to the group? Thank you very much, Kate. And uh, what a wonderful, rich discussion and contribution. So to all of you, uh, I think from the participants list, there are about 55 of you on this call today. Imagine a future where everyone has access to essential reproductive health supplies. To realize that vision, we need your insights. Now, the Reproductive Health Supplies Coalition is a leading partnership dedicated to ensuring universal access to reproductive health supplies. And so as we forge into the next decade, your voice and vision are crucial. We request you to join our Reproductive Health Supplies Coalition strategy redesign, and you do that by clicking the link. Moreover, engage with us at our GMM in Accra, participate in the working groups, and be an integral part of our mission. Together, we know we can ensure reproductive health is accessible, that it is safe and stigma-free. So your voice matters. Your voice can reshape the future. And here at Reproductive Health Supplies Coalition, we await your valuable feedback. So let's redefine the next decade and let's continue this discussion and looking forward to meeting you all in Accra. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pamela. And um, we'll close us out with just to say, um, again, we've just put the, the link to the Strategy Redesign Hub in the chat. You're welcome to email me. Um, I put my email address and um, I can also put you in touch with any of the other strategy design members, Don from Mia Jillian. You can also reach out to the Secretariat staff. We have Martin, Veronique here, as well as others. Um, we look forward again to engaging you um, in, the, in the coming weeks and months. This is an exciting time for the coalition and we're really grateful for your input and engagement. Um, Veronique, can I hand it back to you to, to say any final words? Yes, I just want to thank you for joining us uh, either at the early hours of morning or afternoon or evening. Uh, and I will just end with that same message that we want to hear from you. Um, so please engage and find ways to engage. And we are happy to be here to answer any questions as we follow this process. Thank you. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks, Thank Emilia. See Thank many you. of you in a Thank while. Look forward to the continued engagement. Thank you, Pam. Thank you so much, Kate and team. Veronique. Bye.